This video is on bypass zeros in analog circuits. A zero refers to a signal that increases with frequency or gains energy with frequency. In other words, it's the opposite of a pole. In this particular circuit, in the gray region, what we have is we have the model of an amplifier with an input resistance, a Norton output, so a transconductance gain, and into an output resistance. What we want to show here is the effect of adding a capacitor across this amplifier here. This is a bypass path because without the amplifier, the capacitor now offers an alternate path from the input to output. So basically, it feeds current to the output. So uh, the first thing to note here is that this capacitor, uh, as frequency increases, it the impedance decreases, so a voltage across it will induce current flow through the capacitor. The first thing that it will do is we'll take current from the input, so it helps establish a pole at the input. Uh, but the second thing, which is perhaps what's most interesting in this video, is that that current is being fed to the output. So the output is receiving energy, which is the essence uh, that uh, produces the effect of a zero, so the output voltage receives more energy and the output voltage could increase with frequency. Uh, now, this happens, if you notice here, when we have the current going through the capacitor, the output voltage will increase with frequency whenever that current basically is greater than the amplifier current. So let me backtrack a little bit. At very low frequencies, the impedance across a capacitor is very low. So the capacitor current is low, so it has no impact on the output. At very high frequencies, however, the impedance is very low, so the, cap the capacitor current is very high. So now the output receives considerable energy through from that capacitor and the output increases. So the zero happens whenever this capacitor current is greater than or equal to this amplifier current. Now this amplifier current is actually the output of a two-port model here. So that's a short circuit gain here. And we get that gain when we nullify the effect of the output resistor, which we, to do that, we ground the output. So what we need to compare, or, or rather I'll say it differently, we want to model the effect of this capacitor into the combined transconductance of the amplifier. So to combine it, what we're going to do is we're going to compare and integrate the effect of that current into the transconductor current whenever the output voltage is grounded. So again, the zero happens when the, this feed-forward current is equal to or greater than the amplifier current when the output is grounded. So the feed-forward current is nothing but the voltage across the uh, capacitor impedance. But the output voltage is zero. The output voltage is zero, so it's just the input voltage into the capacitor impedance, and the capacitor impedance is just one over SC. Now, S here is basically proportional to frequency, and to be more specific, is 2 pi frequency. So what we got to do here is we've got to find the frequency where this capacitor current is greater than the amplifier current. And the amplifier current is a transconductance translation of the input voltage. So having said this, uh, we're just looking for the frequency where the capacitor current is greater than the amplifier current. All we need to do is solve for S. So first we know that input voltage is on both sides, so that cancels. And when we solve for S, basically we get the transconductance over the capacitor frequency. And remember, S is 2 pi frequency, so when we solve for frequency, then we have to include 2 pi into that expression. So what we're saying with this is that frequencies that are greater than this value, we get that the capacitor current is greater than the amplifier current, and that the output, therefore, will increase with this um, current. Uh, 
and at very low frequencies, at frequencies that are low, lower than this zero, what we get is that the capacitor current is not greater than the amplifier current. So if I, I go back and I'll say it differently, at frequencies that are lower than the zero, the capacitor current has no impact on the output, and the output voltage is nothing but an ohmic translation of the amplifier current into the output resistance. At, high f at frequencies that are higher than the zero, however, the output is an ohmic translation of the feedforward current into that resistance. So that's what we see here, the feedforward current into the resistance. But that feedforward current increases linearly with frequency because the capacitor impedance decreases with frequency. So what's important here is that since the current increases linearly, the output voltage increases linearly with frequency. So if frequency increases by a factor of 10, the output voltage rises by a factor of 10. That's another way of saying that the output voltage increases 20 dB per decade because this is a rising by a factor of 10 is 20 dB and a decade of frequencies, uh, an increase in frequency of 10x. So if we look at the game plot here, on the x-axis is log frequency and on the y-axis is the effective transconductance, at frequencies below the zero we got just the transconductance of the amplifier. At frequencies above that zero we got the uh, capacitor current overwhelms the amplifier current, so the output, uh, the effective combined output current increases with frequency by a factor of 20 dB per decade. So we wanted to express the output voltage and incorporate the effect of the zero into the entire expression. Um, basically, what we're first going to say is that the output voltage is basically an ohmic translation of the of the amplifier current into the combined output impedance. And that's what we see here on the first part of the expression, is an ohmic translation of the amplifier current into the combined impedance. But the uh, amplifier current is basically a transconductance translation of the input voltage and the input voltage is an ohmic translation of the input current into the combined input impedance and that's what we see here input current into the combined input impedance the parallel combination of the input capacitor and the input impedance of the amplifier and then the effective transconductance and this is the key to all this we've now modeled that feedforward capacitor into the effective transconductance so the effective transconductance includes the effect of the zero. So if we look at this part of the term here, uh, we know that S is 2 pi frequency. So when frequency is much less than the zero, this term is much less than 1. And what we get is that the effective transconductance is just the transconductance of the amplifier, which is what we saw here. And this is really what we wanted to say that zero is doing. At frequencies that are greater than this zero, and that means that the S term is much greater than one, so the one, the effects of the one are negligible. What we see from this term then is that the effective transconductance is now proportional to frequency and it increases with frequency, which is the effect that we wanted to show here. So what we're saying with all of this is that this is a very convenient way of describing the effect of a zero by basically uh, multiplying the low frequency uh, transconductance times this one plus s term and this is very f convenient because since s refers to frequency it can readily tell us whenever frequency is greater than the zero the s term dominates or whenever frequency is less than the zero the s term is overwhelmed by the one now at that point what we have is the ampli the combined amplifier current and finally the output voltage is an ohmic translation of that current into the combined output impedance and that's what we see on this other end here so this is just to show how to integrate the effects of the zero into the overall gain of a circuit 
Now, one thing to note here is that that capacitor current, which remember it went from input to output, is in phase with the amplifier current. What do I mean by that? Well, the, when you have an increase in input voltage, the capacitor current increases, and that same increase in input voltage will also tend to induce the amplifier current to increase, and both feed current to the output, so they reinforce one another, and what we say is that they're basically in phase. And it's also what we say in different words, and we won't say here why is it left half plane. It's basically what I will call a benign uh, effect, or a benign zero. So in feeding current to the output, in feeding energy to the output, we're basically opposing the effect of a pole. In opposing the effect of a pole, it's like removing the effect of a pole. So what we're doing is actually recovering up to 90 degrees of phase shift. So when we look at the phase plot here, at frequencies that are much less than the zero, we got no phase shift. But at frequencies that are much greater, we're recovering up to 90 degrees. And at the zero is when it transitions, we're recovering uh, 45 degrees. A convenient way to express it is using the inverse tan. Uh, and we use the inverse tan and we compare the output frequency or the operating frequency with the zero. Whenever the operating frequency is much greater than the zero, the inverse tan of a large number is 90, so we get this 90. Uh, when, the op when the operating frequency is much less than the zero, the inverse tan of a very low number is close to zero. So it gives us this nice way of expressing phase shift. And at the zero, we get 45 degrees. Now, something very interesting is to show the effect of that same capacitor across an inverting amplifier. And note that this is an inverting amplifier because the current is now being pulled from the output. So when we get an increase in input voltage, the, uh, the, this current will pull the output and the output voltage will decrease. What's uh, first thing to note here is that the uh, capacitor current still feeds energy to the output, so the output we can see that it still rises with frequency at the point that the capacitor current is greater than or equal to the amplifier current. So the magnitude of the output voltage will still increase. What's interesting here, though, is that if we have an increase in input voltage, the capacitor current will tend to increase, but the amplifier current, is, or rather the capacitor current, not only increases, but it feeds the output, whereas the amplifier current, it takes current away from the output. In other words, the capacitor current is out of phase with the amplifier current. This is kind of important because we were expecting the amplifier to invert a signal and instead the capacitor is doing the opposite. So what the capacitor is doing, I'll translate it, uh, with respect to the amplifier. Remember the amplifier is inverting the signal. So let's say the amplifier is doing what it's supposed to do. Well then the capacitor will tend to invert the effect of the amplifier. And after inverting it, it will recover up to 90 degrees of phase shift. So it inverts, it loses 180 degrees and then recovers 90. Overall, it loses up to 90 degrees of phase shift. So at frequencies below that zero, we get no effect. But at frequencies much greater than that zero, the combined effect is to lose up to 90 degrees. And at that frequency, then we lose 45 degrees, which is a transition point. A convenient way to express this is, again, the inverse tan. The only difference now is inverting it on the, on the front. So when frequency is much greater than the zero, we get the inverse tan of a very large number is 90, but now it's negative, so we get negative 90. At the zero, we get negative 45, and at frequencies that are much greater than the zero, the inverse tan of a very low number is nearly zero. So this is what we'll call an out-of-phase zero, which is also called a right-half-plane zero.
Thanks for watching.